Welcome back. In this video, we will finally talk about business topics. So we will talk about balance sheets, income statements, cash flows, the WOC, the CAPM. No, no worries, we won't. The only thing I want to show you is a function named self-referencing cell. And this might be really helpful if you have to work or create financial models. In this video, we will not create a highly sophisticated model. We will simply create an income statement, well, to be honest, with only three lines, revenue, cost and profit, and then think about the planning of these lines for the next years. And for that, we have three different scenarios. And in connection with the scenarios, a self-referencing cell might be really helpful sometimes. This is it actually. Let's start now. So here I am in an empty Excel sheet now. This means we will build everything together from scratch. Now I said that we want to plan our income statement and for that we have three different scenarios or cases. Now let's start with the case selection right here then. So we could write case right there and then write selected right here for example and now we could format this cell, for example, with some border and write one into this. So we could write one, two, three here in the end to select a specific case. Let's maybe also format that a little bit, that it looks a little bit more beautiful in the end. Make it white maybe and bold like this. Now, what else do we need? Well, we could again write case right here and total profit. Now, why am I writing this? Let me increase the width and also format that maybe in orange right now. Now, the reason is that we will see case one, two, three right here. And in this area, I want to see the total profit of all the planning periods. So the sum of that profit for the selected case. So this has not a lot to do with valuation or something. And we will also not consider things like discounting. I'm aware of that. It's just an example how you could use the self-referencing cell. Just keep that in mind when we build the rest right now. Now, we cannot build that total profit right now because we don't have an income statement yet. Now let's create this. So we could build that here maybe and name it business plan. So it sounds more important and also format it a little bit. You see, I just want to keep this struct, oops, I just want to keep this structured and make it bold also. And now we need the years that should be included in that business plan. Well, and this could be 2017. And if we now write equals the previous year plus one and drag it to the right, then we have our planning right here. And we could also select that and make it bold maybe like this. Now, what else do we need? Well, the items in our income statement. And this could be revenue, cost, and the profit. As you can see, not a really sophisticated income statement, but that's not a problem right here. Now, let's assume that we have a revenue of 100,000 in 2017, cost of 60,000, and a profit. Well, this should be then the sum of these two items, so 40,000. So that's 2017. Let's say we know that this is going to be the case. But what about the planning periods? Well, right here, we need to make assumptions for both revenue and cost. So for our revenue assumptions, like this, we could say we have case one, case two, and case three. So the cases we created up here and that we will select in this cell, so C3. Now we can do the same thing for our cost. Let's say cost as percentage of revenue. And we can simply link that to our case one, two, three and copy it down because it's going to be the same in the end. Now, what else can we do? We can format these cells first to make clear that these are cells, maybe as percentage, that these are cells that are kind of inputs for us where we will make our assumptions. And now we have to make some assumptions. 
Well, first I should be more precise with the name right here and maybe name that revenue growth assumptions because now it's clearer what we want to do right here. We want to specify growth rates for our revenue. Now this could be in case one, let's say the optimistic scenario, so the great case where we say everything is going to be awesome. This could be 10% growth in 2018, 15 in 19 and 20% in 2020, so a great business. Case two could be the more conservative case. Let's say we have a growth of 8% in the first year, 10% in the second year and 12% in the third year. Also great, but not as good as case one. And case three, this could be the worst case. Let's say we only have 6% in the first year, 4 in the second and only 2 in the last year. So still growing, but not a lot compared to the other cases. So these are the assumptions for the revenue growth. Now what about the cost as percentage of revenue, as you can see right here? Now at the moment we have a ratio of 60%, so 60,000 compared to 100,000 right here. Let's maybe say that in the best case, case one, this ratio decreases, so our costs decrease by that. So we could say we have cost of 55% in 2018, 50% in 2019 and 45% in 2020. In case two, so the base case, so the normal scenario, we could also say that we have 55% cost in 2018, but then, well, we don't have a big decrease. We only have 52% in 2019 and 50% in 2020. And in case three, our worst case scenario, well, the costs are even increasing to, let's say, 58% in 2007, uh, 2018, to 60% in 2019, and to 62% in 2020. So this is it. This is now what we did with our assumptions. The only thing we have to do right now is we have to incorporate these assumptions in the income statement right here. Now, how can we do this? Well, we have different ways to do that, of course but I will use a choose function. If you're not sure how the choose function generally works and how you could use it when comparing it to if, just take a look at this video. In all other cases, or if you simply want to see it right now, just stay here and create it together with me. So we will now select the revenue in 2018. Well, and what should that be? It should simply be equals choose, right? So we will select now cell C3 as the first value in our syntax. So depending on what is displayed right here, we now have to specify what should be calculated. This means if C3 is equal to one, which is the case right now, by the way, then value one. So again, this means value one means if this is equal to one, then we want to calculate 100,000 multiplied by open bracket one plus the growth rate, right? Because this should be the value the revenue increases when comparing it to the previous year. Now we can close the bracket, write a comma and make sure that we fix C3 because this should always refer to that cell. And now we can simply copy that once, twice and delete the last comma. And now for the second argument, value two, so right here, we only have to change D14 to D15, right here, like this and like that, because this should be case two when we write two into cell C3. And the last thing we should change is D14, so for our value three, so case three, this should be equal to D16 now. Now let's delete that. And I think with that, we should be fine. Let's see, let's press enter. And now we forgot a bracket, but that's automatically corrected. This is fine. And if we now drag the formula to the right and copy it, then we see that this worked. If we now select a different case, so case two, for example, we see that we have different values because now we have this growth assumption in our revenue line. The same thing is true for case three, which will now incorporate the third case. And if we go back to one, then we have our best case scenario. Now that's the revenue, but what about the cost? Well, we have to apply something similar actually. 
Now let's select cell D10 now and write equals, choose, so the same logic. We again select cell C3 and fix it with F4. Now in scenario one, we simply want to calculate minus because it should be a negative value as you can see right here. That's why I write this minus right now. So minus the revenue times case one in our cost assumptions down here. Now we can again write a comma, select the formula, copy twice, delete the last comma, and now simply go to our value two right here and replace D19 with D20 right here then. Let's do this like that. And now do the same thing for value three. So our third case, this means we have to replace D19 with D21 right here. Now this should be fine. Let's now close the bracket and not forget it again. And if we press enter and drag that formula to the right now, then we can see that we now also have our assumption for the cost line for case one. Again, if I change it right here to case two, then both items change, so revenue and cost. And the same thing is true for case three, like this. Now, the only thing we have to do right now is we simply have to take the profit line right here and copy the formula to the right, like this. Well, and now we are finally at the point where we will need the cell referencing cell. And why would we need that? Well, let's think back about that total profit cells right here. What basically should be displayed right here is this equals the sum of the profit like that. As I said, we forget about discounting and many other topics right here, but that's not the point. The point is that if we fix now the rows right here and now copy the formula down, well, we have the same value in here for all three cases. Now, of course, I can change the case now. So case one, case two, or case three, and back to one. But the problem is that this shouldn't be like that. What should be displayed right here are the different profit or the sum of the different profits for the selected cases. And this is where we can use such a self-referencing cell. Now, how can we do that? Let's simply apply it then to understand it. Let's select the first case right here. If we now go into the formula and write if, like this, if this, so the selected case, is equal to the case we want to display right here. So the first case, and write a comma of course, and fix that again. Well, if this is equal to that, then yeah, of course, please give me back the sum that we can see right here. But if that's not the case, so if we select a different case, well then simply refer to the value that is already in that cell. So we write the formula in cell F3 and in the case that the selected case is not equal to the case of cell F3, so case one, then refer to the cell that includes the formula. Sounds strange, but let's try it. So if you press enter now, uh, again, I forgot the brackets, sorry for that. Now we got that. Let me now change the case. So let's now change case two. And what we get right here is a circular reference warning. And that's one of the things you have to be aware of when you create such a self-referencing cell. Because of course you create a circle right here. In that case, it's not a problem. You only have to make sure two things. The first thing is to press OK right here. And to see that down here we have the message that we have that circular reference. If you don't want that because you know that it's in here, you can simply go to File Now, go to Options, formulas right here and now enable the iterative calculation. If you now press OK, you can see that this warning is not appearing any longer because you now have that iterative calculation activated. However, the problem is if this is a big financial model and you do something like this, it's always important to note somewhere that you created that circular reference because otherwise people might wonder what you did right there and in the end they might un 
enable the iterative calculation and find the circles in here. So what we could do is we could simply write here self-referencing cell and copy that down for the other two because we will add that of course for the remaining two cells. But before we do that, let's see what happens now. So we created that self-referencing cell right here. And if I now select case one, then all three cases are the same. But if I now select case two, then only the other two cells change. So the ones where we didn't implement that self-referencing cell at the moment. And why is this happening once again? Because in this case, we only get a recalculation of that formula if our if condition is true. So if our selected case is equal to the case that this cell refers to, so case one. In all other cases, the previously calculated value, so in our case the 236, 240, will simply remain there because the cell retrieves the value that's already in the cell. Now, if we copy that formula down now, like this, then you see that this looks kind of strange because case one and case three show the same value, so something seems to be wrong. And that's an important thing. To make sure that this self-referencing cell works correctly, you have to recalculate it every time you make a change, or in this case, when you create that formula. So if we now select case one, case two, and case three, you can see that, maybe we should change that first, you can see that now we have different values for all three cases. So this is fine. And what you can do right now, of course, is you can select a specific case, let's say case two in our case, which is fine. And now think about your assumptions in your model. You could say that you would assume that the revenue growth in the last year in case two is not 12%, but maybe 15%. Then you simply change that like this and the value automatically updates. But this is only true because we selected case two now, as I just said. If we change the growth expectations in case three, let's say we have 10% in the last year now. So we change it to 10, but nothing changed right here. But if we click right here and now select case three, like this, then it updates. And that's it actually. That's what I wanted to show you. Of course, this is a really, really simple and small example. But this is a function that you can also apply to bigger financial models. Only be careful about the functionalities or about the way the formula works. Now, this means we, that we have that circular reference, so you have to make sure to enable the iterative calculation and to leave a note somewhere to make sure you and other people see and remember that self-referencing cell and that formula you created. And additionally, make sure that each time you change something in your case, you have to reselect it right here in our case. This is it actually. I hope this was interesting for you and that you might be able to apply that in your own financial models. So thanks for watching and see you in the next videos. Bye bye.